Hi guys, so today what we're going to be doing is creating a Intaglio uh, plexiglass etch plate uh, that could be used for printing uh, using a laser cutter and an eighth inch piece of plexiglass. The type of plexiglass that we are using is cast uh, eighth inch acrylic plexi. So let's get started by opening up an image in Photoshop. Uh, we have this image here and what we're going to want to do is uh, first off crop it to the correct size. Uh, we're going to use the crop tool in Photoshop, C for crop. We're going to use uh, width, height, and resolution, 8 inches by 10 inches at 500 pixels per inch. You can see the, the rectangle here, and we're going to just move it until we're happy, and then we'll hit return two times to set that resolution and that crop area. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, make this a black and white image. Um, we're going to go to image or image adjustment and select black and white. And we're going to uh, either pick something that we like, uh, maybe a lighter here, and then adjust each of these sliders by hand until we're happy. Um, or by going to image, image adjustment, and then hue saturation, uh, and then drag the saturation down uh, this way as well. And then we can always change the lightness to bring it up or down. Uh, once we're happy with the grayscale image we've got, we're going to go to image, mode, grayscale, uh, and it'll ask to discard uh, everything, all the color information. We're going to do that. So we've got to flip this image. Uh, the way you do that is you go to image, image rotation, and we're going to flip the canvas across the hor horizontal. Uh, that'll make everything backwards, but because of mirror symmetry, uh, when we print this, everything will be back to the way it was originally. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to now turn this into a bitmap. Uh, but before we do, uh, you'll notice that there are really dark blacks here uh, that you can kind of see, and blacks here. We found that uh, if it's too black, the laser cutter will etch every single thing out here, uh, and this will not hold enough ink to actually show up as black. So before we actually make this a bitmap, we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Levels, and what we're going to do is we're going to take that blackest of black and we're going to actually turn it into gray by dragging this little slider to the number 25. We found that 25 was pretty good and you can see now that this is not um, you can see before after you can see the darkest dark right here is now uh, just this gray instead of being pure black and we're going to hit OK. So that lightens everything up but when we print it it will be dark. Okay finally we're going to go to image mode bitmap uh, and we're going to set our output to 500 pixels per inch because that's what we've set up. We're going to use halftone screen and then we're going to use the following numbers. A frequency of 30 uh, and an angle really doesn't matter of 45 because the shape is going to be round. So 30 round dots for every inch is what we're looking to get and we're going to hit OK. Uh, at this point you can kind of see that we do in fact have uh, a halftone grid and everything is pure black and white. So, uh, the next thing we're going to do for our laser cutter is we're going to go to Image, Mode, and we're going to go back to the grayscale uh, and hit OK. And you can see it, nothing's really changed, uh, but it's now in a mode where we can actually save this. We're going to go to File, Save As. We're going to select, P, uh, or I'm sorry, JPEG, not PNG. Uh, we're going to save it as a JPEG, and we're going to call it Laser Cut. And we're going to save it on our external drive here. Um, and we're going to hit OK. Save. Uh, and we're just going to select maximum, which is fine. We've now saved this image into our drive. So we're going to now bring this over to our laser cutter uh, so that we can get started cutting. OK, so we are now at the Retina Engraver application that is hooked up to our laser cutter. And we're going to go ahead and bring in our uh, bitmap image that has been converted to JPEG. Uh, so the way I do that here is just click on the little icon to bring this in, um, find it on my hard drive here, and just double click it. It'll say that it's very large, um, but it is a JPEG, so it should open up just fine. Um, we're going to set it up so that it fits on the plexiglass plate that we will be putting on the laser cutter. So first things first, we're going to select our piece here and we're going to position it at one inch in and one inch over. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees 
so that uh, it takes a little less time that makes us redo these uh, these things. You can see that the width is 10 and the height is 8 and the little green bar means that the uh, laser cutter needs a little bit of extra space in order to go past these things because it's going to go back and forth. Um, our settings for this project will be threshold no dither. Uh, that means it'll exactly show up uh, as the JPEG. We're going to set our resolution to 500 dots per inch because that's what we set before. Our power we're going to set because of um, just the type of laser we have to 60. We're going to leave our speed at 100 and we're going to set our threshold to 127 which is half of uh, 255 and you'll see when I hit return it lightens up the, um, the image here and you can see the dot patterns uh, on that will be laser cut and so this is what we're going to get and you'll notice that the very dark blacks here are not pure black which is what we were hoping for. Okay we're going to zoom out here. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is after we've uh, etched this in with our raster process, and you can see that this, this is raster because it was a JPEG, we're going to want to cut an outline uh, of this plate. And the way you're going to do that is uh, I'm just going to go ahead and make a rectangle, uh, and I'm just going to arbitrarily draw it over here. I'm going to position it at one in and one over so that it overlaps with the upper left-hand corner here. And then I'm going to make the size uh, 10 wide and the height 8 tall. And you can see now it perfectly aligns uh, with the image here. Because this is a vector, it will cut. And so what I want to do for our vector uh, engraving settings is set the speed to 70, which makes it go slower, full power, for full current, and then we're going to do that one time. And we're going to make sure that that, laser, that rectangle is set to be after to be after, sorry, to go second in our passes here. And if you're not 100% sure, you can turn off the rectangle temporarily with the little eyeball icon here, uh, not actually uh, engrave until you turn it back on. And then you can turn off the image and turn on the rectangle as a secondary thing. But usually it engraves in the order that the whatever's on top gets done first, and then whatever's below uh, gets done second. Uh, at this point, we can hit the play button and it will send the job to the laser. So let's get the laser all set up. First thing we want to do is peel off the paper from only one side of the acrylic. Now we're going to put the uh, plate on the laser cutter. And I'm going to go back to the Retina Engrave software and I'm going to select the Outline Run Perimeter tool. Uh, this will allow me to see where the actual um, perimeter of this outline will be. Okay, everything is good, and now I'm going to make sure that the height uh, and the focus of this uh, plate is exactly where we want it, which it is. Okay, now I'm going to go back and hit the play button, and we're going to uh, go ahead and etch the plate. This will take about an hour or so. Okay, now that the... Uh, rastering is done or the etch etching is done we're going to go ahead and turn off our image but we're going to turn on the rectangle make sure that our uh, laser cutting is set to the right power and speed and we're going to hit the play button uh, and this will send the job to the laser cutter where it will cut around the entire edge of the plate we're doing this second because we want to make sure that the warping is kept to a minimum um, by leaving the paper mask on the back and cutting after the etching was done, uh, this will actually make the warping be at a minimum.